But in the case of cobalt chloride, it is blue in color. As, no, as soon as water is introduced, it becomes what? Pink. So we are looking for, since the question made, made mention of cobalt chloride, we are looking for the color change from what? Blue to what? Pink. So let's see our option. Option A, white or blue. No, that is a copper sulfate. B, white to red. No. Option C, blue to white. No. Option D, blue to pink. And that's what we are looking for, blue to pink. That would definitely be what? Option D. The next question. Chlorination of water for town's supply is carried out to... Chlorination is the process whereby chlorine is introduced. And what is the significance of introducing chlorine? The significance of introducing chlorine is to kill germs in the system, in the water. So let's see our option. Option A, make the water colorless. No. Remove germs from the, from the water. Yes, to kill germs, to eradicate germs. Then C, make the water tasteful. No. D, remove odor from the water. No. So that would definitely be option B. That's to remove germs from the water. Question 10. The importance of sodium aluminate 3 in the treatment of water. Sodium al aluminate 3 can be used as a substitute to potassium aluminium, as a substitute to potassium aluminium sulfate, the one we call our alum. So if you don't want to use this, you can use sodium aluminate 3 in the treatment. So what is the significance of using this? The significance of using this is to coagulate the dead particles so that they become clumped together and they become heavy, which we can now remove by what? Filtration. So in this situation, the importance of solution of sodium aluminate 3 in the treatment of water is to A. Neutralize acidity. Acidity, you know. B. Prevent goiter and tooth decay. What prevents goiter is what? Iodine. And what prevents tooth decay is fluorine, so that can never be the answer. C. Kill jams. What is the substance that kills jams? That's fluorine, so it can never be. D. Cause coagulation. So the answer is definitely D, which is cause coagulation. Question 11. Substances employed as drying agents are usually A. Hygroscopic. B. Efflorescent. C. Acidic. D. Amphoteric. Question says that substances employed as drying agent. Before you can, uh, you can employ a substance as a drying agent, the first you need to consider what is the significance of drying agent, of a drying agent. A drying agent is a substance that absorbs moisture, that has affinity for moisture or water. So what it means is that drying agent is is designed to eradicate or to remove water from the system. So here we are saying a hygroscopy. Hygroscopy is a substance that absorbs moisture. So it is the, in fact between the three phenomena where you have efflorescent, deliquescent, and hygroscopy. Efflorescent, deliquescent, and hygroscopy. Hygroscopy is the most suitable drying agent in those three. So, and that is why why it is more su suitable than deliquescent is simply because in the case of deliquescent, when the substance absorbs moisture, it will turn into solution. But in the case of hygroscopy, when it absorbs moisture, it will not turn into solution. That is what makes hygroscopic substance a better drying agent than deliquescent. So, in this, let's see our option. A, hygroscopy. Yes, correct. B, Efflorescent. Efflorescent is nullified because in the case of efflorescent, the substance will lose moisture to the atmosphere. So it cannot work. And efflorescent is never used as what? A drying agent. C. Acidic. No. That one is odd. D. Amphoteric. Amphoteric oxides. Uh, amphoteric substance is, is a substance that has both acidic and basic properties. So that one has no correlation with what we are discussing. So automatically, it will definitely be option A, which is what? Hygroscopy. Permanent hardness of water can be removed by A, adding slick line. Slick line is what? That's calcium hydroxide. 
You can't remove permanent hardness by this. You can only remove temporary hardness. Then, adding caustic soda. Boiling. You can't remove permanent hardness by boiling. Deep filtration. You can't remove. You can't remove permanent hardness by filtration. So the only suitable option in this regard would definitely be what option B, which is what adding caustic soda. solubility we have unsaturated solution we have saturated solution super saturated solution then we have solub solubility curves and simple deduction from them we also have solubility defined in terms of mole per dnq so we can define solubility in terms of mole per dnq and simple calculations involved then also solvent for fat oil and paints and the use of such solvent for removal of stains. They will also have suspensions and colloids. They will also have amatan haze and paints as examples of suspensions and for milk, aerosol spray and rubber solution as examples of colloids. Objectives here because we need to pay attention to the objective. So we have the objectives here which the candidates must be mindful of in order to do well in the examination. One, candidates should be able to distinguish between different types of solution. Yes, under this, we have saturated solution, we have unsaturated solution, we have super saturated solution. Under the saturated solution, a solution is said to be saturated if it's contains as much solute, solute as it can normally dissolve at a particular temperature in the presence of undissolved solute particles. So when we say a, solu a solution is unsaturated, that means it contains more of the solvent than the solute. So in that situation, we continue to to introduce more of the solute into it until it gets to what? Saturated level. Then we have what is called suspension. Suspension. Suspension is a heterogeneous mixture of undissolved particles in a given medium. Then super saturated solution. Super saturated solution is one which contains more of the solute than it can normally dissolve at that temperature. Then we talk about some parameters under this solubility, rather, solubility. We have the, the solubility curve, solubility curve and deduction because we can use the, the curve to dip. To, de to deduce some meaningful parameters so as to help us in our day-to-day -day activity and also it has diverse purposes in industries such as the pharmaceutical industries, the cement industries, the soap industries and what have you. So, we are going to be looking at the curve to do that. With the curve, we can now, because the curve will be, will be plotted in such a way that we have our temperature on the horizontal axis and the, the nature of solutes or the mole of solute in on the vertical axis. Now let's talk about solubility. What is the meaning of solubility? Solubility can be defined 
in terms of gram, it can be defined in terms of gram per dm cube or mole per dm cube, mole per dm cube. So solubility is defined as the amount of solute in gram that can be dissolved in one dm cube of a solvent or solution at a particular temperature. So you can have it this way or this way. So now to talk about the important concept here which is the solubility curve. The solubility curve is demonstrated on the board where you have different salts at different rates of increase. Some are independent of temperature, why some depends on the temperature. And it should be noted that the solubility of a solid is directly proportional to the temperature. That is why most you see the curve moving upwards. So in that situation, if we are to interpret this particular solubility curve, we discover that there are some salts, just like your sodium chloride, that follows that horizontal line. Also, calcium hydroxide. But when we talk about potassium nitrate and potassium chloride, we discover that what happens there is that in the case of